Hey there, folks. I'm Matt Hansen. And I'm John Johnson. And you're listening to Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. The podcast where we discuss favorites we've reread, both classic and new comics we want to read, and everything else in between. And here's the comic we picked this week. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Planes, Planes Trains, Trains, and, and Comic, comic books. books. Today, we are reading another Batman story. If you listened to our last one, we read Hush, which was like a recap of our first episode. Uh, or it was a redux of our first episode yeah. uh, from five years ago. But uh, now we we did a uh, like a Thanksgiving poll for our patrons to vote on and... Uh, they're all kind of family centric, and the one that won was Batman: A Death of the Family. Not unnecessarily the the best family situations. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. It wasn't that the we weren't actually trying to find like nice, happy Thanksgiving uh, stories. It was just stories that revolved around family, and that could be any any story revolving around a family. Meaning, could be horrible. Could be. Yeah, I mean, everybody's everybody's uh, the time of year is different, and sometimes it's uh, horrible. And hopefully, not as horrible as some of those stories. But <laughs> yeah, hopefully, the Joker's not you know murdering your whole family. But um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing today. Uh, now I had read recently the first like twelve issues of this run, this Batman run. This is the New Fifty Two Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Uh, I was not impressed by the first twelve issues, but this picks up right after that. This is the I think it's issues 13 through 17 um, of that run. And this was a very highly touted run. Uh, and specifically, like, just the Joker looks pretty freaky because the cover is of Joker missing his face. And it's been, like, stapled. Like, his face has been removed. And then it's, like, stapled back onto his head. So it looks really creepy. Uh, any, and had you read this before, John? No, I, I, I had seen the cover, I think. Um, you know, I've seen some of the – throughout the, you know, us being – into the podcast and doing things, you know, come across them. Um, but yeah, I had never read this and I, you know, I didn't, I had no idea what to expect as far as um, new 52 timeline. Um, this being a, was it like a, like a reboot basically? Cause there were so many issues. They felt like it was daunting for having 800 plus issues. Yeah. It's like a reboot of new number ones for all the series. No, I wasn't uh, familiar with it, but um, yeah, again, I, I see a lot of statues and pops of like this and several of the jokers, from this series going forward. So I assume, you know, obviously it's pretty popular. Yeah. I, I mean, a lot of people like it. I, like I said, wasn't a big fan of the first 12 issues, but I was like willing to give this a shot. Uh, this is like probably the most famous storyline of this, um, of this run, at least the initial part of it. Um, so yeah, we, we start off in Gotham with commissioner Gordon Bullock. They're standing in the rain and apparently uh, Commissioner Gordon has thought it was a good idea to like test, make sure that his cops are being good detectives and keeping up on all that stuff. So he's, I guess, started like a little treasure hunt for all of them to find the uh, the places where he hides his cigarettes because he's not supposed to smoke. And apparently he has little hidey holes where he puts cigarettes throughout the city. I guess when he's having a nick fit, he can stop at any place that's close by where these are. Um so the the conceit is that he's like waiting for his team to find all the places and they find all of them but one so apparently the cops are up to the challenge now <laughs> i don't know about you john but uh i don't i don't go to work to play games <laughs> or run around and do stupid shit in the rain uh, i go to work cuz i have to so how, how dare you that this is team building and synergy. Uh, this would be something my that, least you know, favorite thing about promo- jobs. <laughs> no, I no when it, when it's something like that, it's like I could be home with my family, who I also hate. But <laughs> but like seriously, like yeah, like you know, if you think of a like a, a rundown Gotham cop, I that's what I assume. You know, yeah, like I don't want to do this bullshit. I don't want to be at work. I also don't want to be a fan. I'd just rather be at the bar drinking or. Uh, <laughs> I think you were you, you were joking like, but or banging my mistress or. Something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather be fucking my mistress or, or, or getting drunk in a bar. Um, yeah, something like that, you know. Uh, I don't know. I, I would be like, what the fuck, Gordon? But um, we see him, you know, after this is all over, he goes to, like, congratulate his officers. Uh, we see a flower truck pull up in the front as he goes in. 
And uh, as he's talking to his officers, telling them good job inside, he sees someone enter the door uh, and he recognizes it as the Joker. And he's like, oh, my God, not you. And then the lights kill. And then he puts his flashlight on and pulls his gun out. But Joker's gone already. And you just see blood all over the place. And Joker, wherever the flashlight is, Joker is not there anymore. Uh, and he's like taunting Gordon through this darkness, uh, killing officers one by one. And I think he kills something like 18 officers, they say later. Um, that's pretty hardcore that he was able to do that. Uh, what do you think of this opening? I mean, yeah, th- this definitely set a tone that I, I I wasn't expecting, and I was like, oh, yeah, like he's he's here to you know he's he's here to I we don't know where he's been, um, so I guess he's been gone for. Yeah, they say like he's been missing for a year. Uh, they have no setup for why his face has been ripped off, other than the doll maker did it, but that wasn't in the arc I read, so I don't know what comics those appeared in. Yeah, I, I I looked up a little bit of it, and like I said, I didn't even get the full. It was like the doll maker cut it off, but it was also technically part of Joker's plan and something to do with messing with Batman. And but we don't also don't know why the the uh, his face was like just in a box. And uh, the Joker's face that had been cut off was in like uh, a, a maybe like a cooler box or something, but still like just in the evidence room. <laughs> yeah, we assume it was in like the refrigeration box or something, but. I guess. <laughs> yeah, where they keep all the other like DNA evidence, probably. Okay, there you go. It just the the way on on the panel, it just shows him in the room, and then him like opening, it. like it looks like maybe like an igloo cooler box or something. But still, it's like it just was odd. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, it definitely was like a weird setup. I'll say that. And also, like the beginning of this comic, I was like, "What is going on with the whole cigarettes thing?" It was it was an odd way to start it. But uh, now the Joker's out and. Batman has has to tell his whole Bat family, like, hey, the Joker's on the loose, just so you know. Uh, we see Nightwing and Batgirl and Red Hood. And I was wondering, do you know who Red Robin is, John? No, actually. I, I, I kept messing. Like, I was like, wait a minute, is that Damien? But no, wait, Damien Wayne is in the Batcave, so who is? Damien is Robin right now. Yeah. So, no, I didn't know who Red Robin was. So, Red Robin is Tim Drake post-Robin. Just like Nightwing. It's like his Nightwing. But he just kept Robin. He but kept Robin, but now he's Red Robin. Oh, okay. Uh, and he was specifically became a character. Like, he did that in uh, the storyline where Batman dies, or when Batman goes missing after Final Crisis. Um, he's, like, on the... He's trying to find Batman, because he thinks... He, he's the only one who thinks he's not dead. So he becomes Red Robin during that time. So that's like the weird thing. They're, they're keeping some stuff, you know, but changing other things. Like like uh, Barbara Gordon, I was surprised to see her because she was paralyzed and she was Oracle last I read, you know, before this. Um, but apparently in the new 52, she's not paralyzed. But they do reference, later on, they reference like the Joker says, I think it's when Joker's taunting commissioner gordon in that uh in the room when he's killing everybody he says something about like you know killing or or like taking pictures or shooting someone in a hawaiian shirt so he's referencing killing joke but barbara's fine i was i was a little confused were you confused by that yeah you know i i I think i missed it the first time but going back through i see yeah it was like a clown in a hawaiian shirt knocks on the door and it's like well wait a minute like yeah like so we're referencing it, but it's like a tongue in cheek reference and not like actual since again, Barbara's back row upright and, you know, swinging around the city. Yeah. And young and like, you know, doing her thing. Yeah. It was, it was kind of weird, but either way they're, they're pulling from stuff. I just kind of went with it. I was like, okay, obviously back girl is not paralyzed. So we're going to go with, she wasn't shot by the Joker. Um, so like I said, he, he, Bruce calls all of those you know, all of his family and says, Hey, Joker's on the loose again. He's back. So just be aware. Um, and then there's something on TV that starts appearing and it's like, uh, I don't know, some, some TV show host Joker's torturing him on TV and making him talk to, um, everybody. He's like, he's basically taunting Batman through, uh, the TV with this guy. Uh, and then he ends up killing the guy, uh, with a gun on TV. Like shoot, he makes the guy shoot himself in the head basically. Um, 
and it's very you know sick obviously uh so joker you know he's doing his thing batman's now trying to he's got to find him right um and it seems like i don't know about you but there's a couple scenes where like batman goes to talk to gordon and it's like they're trying to set a trap uh, or they're trying to protect the mayor because in that video the joker threatened the mayor and so all the police are at the mayor's office and i saw this coming from a mile away i don't know if you did if you picked up on it but the, they're like look look mayor there's like a hundred guys here we have everything covered with snipers on the roof there's no way he's getting in uh and then the mayor's like well, why do you, why all your guys got to be in here? I just got the floors waxed. And immediately I was like, okay, something about the wax is like, that's how the Joker administered the toxins that are going to kill everybody. Uh, and sure enough, that's what happened. So like, did you pick up on that? Yeah. I, I feel like I, when he said he, he just had it clean. I was like, mm, that's a, that, yeah, it definitely. The, you know, they, it, all the Joker stuff usually is a little, some kind of cast like like oh like it's coming so yeah but i just thought that was way too like telegraphed <laughs> and maybe that was the point but like it's supposed to be like more clever than that you know like in the batman animated series they would do that a lot where like the joker was doing this or he was the janitor or something but it came out of nowhere i always thought when i and I, I mean i've watched it since i was a kid and it still seems fairly clever whereas this i like the the second he said that i was like oh the Joker put some kind of chemical in the floor wax and that's what did it. Um, and that's, what's going to do it. So uh, I was correct. Uh, all of a sudden the, uh, all the police officers and not only that, like there's something in their clothes. It's like a, it's like a die hard three where there's a two part compound that has to interact in order to kill these guys. And it was like, Oh, their clothes had the one compound and I'm not exactly sure how he got on that, like how he put that in on them. And then the other half of the compound was the floor wax or whatever. And when those two are together, I guess in the same room, it like kills everybody. So did you get that? Did you? No, I I, I, I didn't quite like I, I still was like, I didn't know if they like just like the way they were walking on it did it or I, yeah, I wasn't 100 percent. Yeah, I don't know how they mixed or how he did it, but he did it. You know, at this point, I was just kind of like, okay, just to move the story along. I'm not really questioning it. I'm just trying to, like, get into the story. Uh, but Batman figures out that, like, oh, Joker is trying to lead me back to the first time we met. And we see him as the Red Hood, which, once again, is a reference to the Killing Joke. Um, this is the origin from Killing Joke of the Joker. So that's why I'm like, are we referencing the jo the Killing Joke or not? Because Bat Batgirl's still not shot and paralyzed. So, uh, but either way, uh, you know, Batman goes to this chemical plant where where Joker was created essentially the first time they met, and um, and it turns out it's not Joker underneath the mask this time. It's Harley Quinn. She's uh, doing Joker's bidding, um, and she she lures Batman close to her. And then a big hammer comes out of nowhere and hits him into a vat of chemical or a chemical vat. It's not full yet. And then it starts to fill up with chemicals as the top closes. So now Batman's stuck in there. Um, and then we see like Harley was like part of this, but she didn't seem to want to be. Um, she starts crying and saying like, he's not the same Mr. J anymore, I guess, because he's gone extreme or something. Is that what you got from that? Yeah, I, I figured it was it's something like that because she's like, I, he's not the same and what he's going to do to you, like, I can't. And she's like, you know, obviously, like, either sobbing or, you know, like, having a hard time getting the words out now. So I was like, oh, damn, okay, like, it's too much for Harlequin and Harlequin is, you know, crazy, so. Yes. Although this time, I'm not sure what she was like because now she's like a nice anti-hero person. So, like, she doesn't, she doesn't really have the teeth that she used to have where she's like murdering people and stuff. Um, at least from what I've read recently. So I don't know if that's where this started kind of thing, but, um, either way. Uh, so Joker is taunting Batman through the helmet where he has like a speaker and he's saying like, Oh, I, I am going to get your family. Like I'm, I'm doing something right now. Um, 
and he he basically is saying like the whole the whole premise for this comic is the Joker has decided that Batman is has become weak or soft because he has a family, so he wants to take that family away from Batman um, in order to make him the hard nosed hero he used to be, so they could have fun and fight each other again. So, um, so we cut to Wayne Manor where we see the doorbell knock and Alfred goes to answer it. And then it turns out Joker's there and he hits Alfred in the head with a hammer. Uh, and that's kind of like the big, like dun, dun, dun moment. Uh, just for what things that come later that this surprised me because this scene, I definitely was like, Oh yeah. Like he's really like, gonna hurt him because he killed 18 cops and now he you know he broke into Wayne Manor and he looks like he's about to bash uh, Alfred's head in yeah and it also puts it in, in your mind like oh he must know who Batman is because he's going after Alfred um, and all that but we get like a little side thing where Harley we see why Harley's sad because Joker is like obsessed with Batman now and he's different and he's meaner and she's crying and I was kind of like I don't care <laughs> um it's just like how she got to that point in the factory. Um, but yeah, that's how it ends with, with, with uh, Alfred being hit in the head with a hammer. Um, and then we get like a last page of, I, th- I think this is the cover of the next issue, but it's uh, Joker sitting on a TV, but he's got a bunch of TVs in front of him and they're all hanging from wires. And each of them has like a person of the Bat family on it. Um, and then I don't know if you got this reference, John. Do you know what Joe's Garage is? No, I had no idea. That's a Frank Zappa reference. Great album. Uh, if you like weird, fucked up music. <laughs> I do, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I, I'll I say this. Know, I, know any, any I like prog music. I'm a big fan of prog rock, and it's too proggy for me. But I, I, I will listen <laughs> to it for uh, to like to see what's capable or like what's possible in musical playing. But then I will like never listen to it again for ten years because it's. It's very like not to me personally, not super enjoyable to listen to. But uh, but then I'm like listening to the drumming and I'm like, holy crap, those are crazy drums. So, um, yeah, but it's a reference to that crazy album. Gotcha. I'm assuming or there's nothing else I know that's like Joe's Garage reference. So um, it makes sense that like Greg Capullo would reference that because he's kind of like a kind of like a music guy too i believe so so anyway we start issue two with batman still in the vat that's filling up and it seems like harley has um put him like harley's actually hooked up the hose to this vat i think which kind of goes against what she's like crying but she's going along with this so she's like i don't know it's weird she's sad but she's not stopping it and batman is like stuck in the same chemicals that made joker but luckily, I guess his suit is chemical resistant or impermeable. And then he like has a mask that also lets him breathe under the chemicals. And then he has some kind of intense air pressure device that like lets him blow a hole in the side of this thing. So uh, it's one of his gadgets, which sure, I'll go with it. Um but yeah, what'd you think of that scene? Did, like some of this is a lot of that, like Batman's ready for anything, even stuff that makes no sense. Like, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls out shark repellent in this, you know? <laughs> no. Yeah. He's, you know, he's doing his, he's doing, you know, where, where is he Harley and yelling at her? And yeah, again, she's crying and like walking away and yeah, I don't know. It was interesting. Like, yeah, again, sure. Batman has something to help him get out of an acid filled bat. Like, I buy it. It's fine. I did like that, like, I guess his suit is definitely resistant of it, but it still was like. Well, there's like multiple layers. There's like the outside layer that has the symbol and everything. And then there's like the under layer that apparently is chemical resistant and all that. Yeah. And his cape was not. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, that was that was that was again. Yeah, it's Batman. He Luckily, gets, his he, mask was, too. <laughs> and his. Yeah, he were he, you know, his cow and his. His cow perfectly, like seamlessly, uh, has a you know airtight seal along the uh, mask when he puts it on. Yeah. So Bruce gets home 
he's like he's worried about his you know his kids um or the bat family kids and uh he's looking around for alfred he can't find alfred he finds a tape uh wrapped on the doorstep that is you know in joker colors it's purple and green he puts it in and, and it's uh a pretty fucked up tape of Joker torturing Alfred. Um, now, I would say this is a red herring for what we find out later. But, like, they make it sound like he is blinding Alfred with ammonia in his eyes. Because Alfred's like, you think a blindfold is going to scare me? And he's like, blindfold? Is that what you think? Why, is that why you think you can't see? And then he's like, I poured ammonia in your eyes. And burned out your eyeballs or whatever. <laughs> like, uh, and I was kind of like, holy shit, this is hardcore. But then later on, I was very like, this, not that I want Alfred to have his eyes burned out, but, you know, disappointed that that wasn't the case. What about you? Do you think that? Yeah. Again, like, I, I think we're, we're kind of leading up to our anticipation of like how things started versus how they, how they ended. How they panned out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I, so at this point, still, I was like, fuck, like he, he, you know, maybe beamed him, bashed his head a little bit, and then, yeah, now he's like fucking torturing him. I was like, yeah, this Joker is like, he's truly gone crazy and is like going hardcore. So I was still like, holy crap, at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, so Batman's like, oh shit, I got to go, like, talk to Gordon about this so we can try to find him. And we're together with the cops. And he goes to Gordon's house, wakes Gordon up. Then Gordon starts to bleed out profusely. Now, this is one of the things I'm like, once again, what? how did this happen? Like, apparently, Joker administered some kind of, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, I can't remember the name of it. But it's like, you know, the, the stuff that un- unclots your blood so you don't have strokes. Um, he gives him a bunch of that. And it was kind of like, okay, when and how <laughs> and where? <laughs> um, what'd you think of that? Yeah, I, I that I was I thought that was odd. You know, he, he had the thing that was like uh, the clue of being like, oh, maybe uh, Gordon is the next target. But I, yeah, I didn't quite understand like how he just started yeah like how how that got in his blood like there was no like scene that they showed where he like got a injection or touched some cream or something you know what i mean like there's no there was nothing that like made you think he was going to be in danger other than like you said batman deduced that he might be the next victim yeah Um, thank goodness that batman showed up right when he did because uh i mean otherwise gordon actually might have died yeah, luckily he didn't just start bleeding. And that was the other thing. Like he didn't get cut or anything. He just like literally blood just starts seeping out from under his fingernails and stuff. Uh, which I'm like, I don't think that's how it works. It's not like rat poison or something where like liquefies your insides <laughs> or whatever. Like uh I don't know why he would just start bleeding profusely out of sealed skin, but he does and it's shocking. So that seemed like what this was it was trying to like shock you into being really invested in it. And I never believe, I never believed it cause they didn't do a good job setting it up in my mind. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like if you're going to show Joker do something like that, you got to set up like how it happened, you know, like how did, how did Joker do that? You know, I don't, I don't know. It, it wasn't, it wasn't enough set up for me personally. Yeah. Doing things. I, I mean, I, I'm agreeing in the fact that like, if you're going to do it, the setup needs to be really good or you need to show it happening. Like him doing all the things off screen or off page in this, like it doesn't like, you know, some of it, like the come running at Alfred with a hammer. Sure. That one, like I was like, Oh fuck. And then, you know, he's saying he's torturing him like, okay, I believe that one because, you know, he looked like he was hitting him. You you know, he was going to bash his head with a ball peen hammer, but also like, like this, yeah, exactly. Like, so he did something to to Gordon, but we don't know what. And then they don't really explain it. It's like, oh, oh, okay, like that's crazy, but it's not like it's not as impactful. Yeah, yeah, it just seemed like uh, we're shocking you, 
And if you go along with it, it's going to be real shocking, at least at the beginning. And I was kind of like, I wasn't into it enough to just go with it initially. So I was kind of, it just made me not go with it more the more we got into this kind of shocking stuff that didn't get set up fully. But um, so Gordon's in the hospital now, Nightwing's talking to Batman and um, Batman tells him and not, not the other kids that Alfred is missing, Joker's kidnapped him. And Nightwing's like, well, you need to tell the rest of the family because obviously, you know, that's important to know. He must know who we are. And Batman's like, no, he doesn't. I promise. I know he doesn't. And Nightwing's like, how can you know that? And Batman doesn't tell him how he does, but he's insistent that he knows the Joker does not know who they are. Um, and then he just leaves like he does. <laughs> and, uh, and, but, but Batman knows the next place that Joker wants to meet him. And basically they're going through like jo Joker setting up all the places that they met in the, the, the old comics, like in the golden age comics, like whatever issues they met in there, that's like they're meeting at those same places again. So the first time was the chemical factory. The second time is the aqueduct where uh, I guess Joker tried to poison the city water and stuff. Um, so they meet there. Joker blows up some shit. Uh, yeah, he, some teeth come flying out of the water. There was a lot of stuff. I'm like, I don't understand how any of this matters. <laughs> like he blows up part of the aqueduct, but it doesn't like flood anything or stop anything. And I was kind of like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. Um, so, I mean, I got that there. He was like meeting him here, but I didn't understand. There was like people that he had kidnapped and it was like all the stuff that batman thought was going to happen all did happen like he was not able to stop it but i was also kind of like why do we care about that stuff <laughs> um did you feel differently about it? it it was definitely odd like he joker being like oh like this is how you expect it to go down and like yeah so i just went ahead and already did it and i was like Okay, that's yeah. It, it was odd for sure, and then like, well, it was like that big these... moment. I can't remember what movie it is. There's a movie that is a superhero ish kind of movie where the bad guys like, um, you know, I'm gonna poison the water. I'm gonna do all this stuff, and then he says, "And I did it ten minutes ago. Like it's already done." And I can't remember what that is. Uh, oh. I can't remember exactly if it's something else, but I know in V for Vendetta, he does it at least in the movie. I can't remember if he does it in the comic, but in the movie, when he like poisons that older doctor lady, she's like, are you going to kill me? And he's like, I did 10 minutes ago. <laughs> That's right. But I know I, I, yeah. an, another place it happens too, like in an actual like scenario. It sounds familiar, but I can't, yeah, I can't place it either. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's basically what Joker does. He's like, you think this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Well, I already did all that. Uh, and so, you know, now I'm going to go after your family. And he like basically lays out like, um, like how he's going to do that or like why he's doing that. He does a big speech, but in the speech, unlike, I guess the other times they do it, it's already been done all of the bad stuff, except what he's going to do to the family. So like he says, like, you think I'm going to kidnap these people? Well, they're already kidnapped and dead. And then I was going to blow up the aqueduct. Well, I already did that, you know? So, um, but he tells Batman, like, I know who your family is and I'm going to kill them all one by one. And there's nothing you can do to stop it because they're already going to be like, it's already in the process. So, um, and I guess Batman is assuming, and you tell me if I'm wrong about this, John. Batman's assuming he's talking about the kids, the, you know, all the different people have been Robin or Batgirl or whatever. But Joker's actually talking about the rogues gallery. Is that correct? See, I, I don't know. I, I took it as like basically like they're, because he says they're imposters and phonies. I thought it meant like, like none of them are real heroes or whatever. Um, so that, that I still took it as like his the family because he says he knows. I did too then, but then later on, when all the like the penguin and Two Face and other people get involved, 
he's like, it's, th- it's we're all together, one big family, like it should be. And I'm like, wait, is this the family he was talking about? <laughs> so, well, maybe yeah. it's maybe it's a double edge, you know, maybe it's Joker both. Is, it's a double yeah. entendre. Yeah, he, I mean, he even calls himself quote unquote, look like I'm two faced now, haha, <laughs> you know, so maybe he's he's playing on that, that a little, but yeah, like him, like I know who you are, I have this little, you know, book that says has all of you know all your dirty secrets in it and all, and all your family in it yeah he shows the little little black book or whatever um and doesn't show batman what's inside of it but you know he never says you know i know it's you bruce he never says anybody's name he just says i know your secret identities and you can't get me to say their names out loud like so immediately i was like he doesn't know or it's something it's like a misdirect because he's not saying bruce or anybody's name you know what i mean um, and I guess the misdirect was, would have been like set up better if you believed the whole like Alfred thing. Like if you, th- if you were on board and you thought, oh, he must know because Alfred, why would he kidnap Alfred? Um, and you'd also have to believe that Bruce was wrong in thinking that Joker doesn't know because he was very insistent, uh, to Nightwing that he didn't know. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, so after the whole aqueduct thing, Batman falls falls in the water. He gets kicked in the face, and he gets knocked out, and then Joker gets away. Um, and then Bruce wakes up in his house surrounded by all the Bat family people, and uh, they're all talking and stuff, and then all of a sudden – Alfred comes in, but he's his face is removed, and then he starts trying to kill everybody with an axe. And then Batman wakes up, and it was a dream, but he's still surrounded by by the Bat family now, but just in the Bat case. <laughs> it's a dream and a dream. So the whole Bat family's there. We get a little bit of their dynamic, where like Damien is a little shit still. Like he isn't. Uh, he's not like he is now. He's a lot more mature now. But I think back then he's supposed to be like eight or nine or something. So. Um, He's still a little mouthy. I mean, he's got attitude now, but not. He's a little more annoying, I think, in this than he was or than he is now. But um, you know, Red Hood is there, and that's Jason Todd, and Jason doesn't get along with anybody either. But like, he's just a loner. He's not like a dick or anything. But you get a little bit of how they are. And then the kids find out that Alfred or Nightwing tells them that Alfred was kidnapped. They see the video. Uh, they're like, why didn't you tell us? Um, and they're like, he obviously knows who we are. You should have told us. And Batman's like, no, I know for a fact he doesn't know. And they're like, how could you know? And then we get a flashback of like the third time they met, I guess, where there's a big blimp and Joker and him are fighting on top of it and it's spreading gas everywhere. And, uh, and then after the fight, you know, Batman wins. He goes away on his bat boat. He goes back to his cave. He goes to sleep. When he wakes up in the morning, he goes down to his cave to where the boat is parked. And on the boat or on the dock, I wasn't sure if it's the dock or the boat, he finds a Joker card. Meaning, I'm assuming that the Joker, we're supposed to assume that the Joker was in the lair, like in the bat cave. So he walked around all night while Bruce was sleeping or all morning. And could have found out that Bruce was him then, but Bruce is like, but I know he didn't. <laughs> I was like, why did you tell this story? If you literally made it sound like he does know, but like you didn't, you didn't put any of their fears to rest with that story. Um, but he insists that it is secure. God damn it. They're all secure. Yeah. It's not the best story to tell and make it again. Yeah. Make it seem like, well, I found the, the, found this joker playing card so obviously he was here but also let me tell you that he wasn't here and i know that for sure and it's like oh okay yeah so part of uh i guess tracking down the joker they they found like a cell signal that was being used during the whole dam or the aqueduct thing and uh tracks it down to some guy named dylan mcdyer and it turns out that that guy is an arkham guard And Batman thinks he's working with the Joker, but it turns out the Joker has a bunch of the Arkham guards like being blackmailed by him. And he's turned Arkham into some like giant Joker prison 
that no one knew about because on the outside, or I guess if you just went in there normally, you would think everything's running normally, but then he's been like building it up to some like giant, you know, thing or whatever. Um, like giant Joker prison that everybody's terrified. All the guards are terrified and all the inmates kind of run the place with him as the King. Um, and so, uh, we do see like, uh, Joker has recruited all the other people. Like we saw him recruit the penguin earlier, but he, uh, he's also recruiting, um, the Riddler. Uh, and later on we see he has other people as well. But he does this whole thing with the Riddler that I was like, this took a long time to get that. But uh, <laughs> but basically he's like, Riddler, you know, like he sees him in his cage and he's like, Riddler, you've, I'm sure you can get out of that cage. And Riddler's like, I don't want to. And then he's like, no, you want to because I just threw this grenade in there. And he like throws a smoke grenade that's full of like the Joker poison in there. And then he's like, now you got to get out or else you're going to die. And so Riddler escapes. Um, and yeah. I don't know. It's just like they're basically just rigging this place so that when Batman comes, it's going to be all like set with traps that they all devise together. So Batman comes to Arkham. He immediately finds all the guards are like dancing with each other in Batman and Joker costumes. And they're, they've been forced to dance because they're standing in puddles of water in these rooms that are electrified if they stop dancing once again, kind of convoluted devices, but I don't, I mean, this didn't seem that crazy. Cause like, if you've read some of the old, like seventies Joker stuff or like golden age stuff, like there's a lot of convoluted traps and whatnot. So I didn't hate this part. What'd you think of this part? No, I, I, you know, I thought it was funny. It definitely, it seemed like an over the top Joker thing. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Dance monkey basically to, yeah. to the, the guards that were there. So, yeah, and like Batman defeats it pretty easily. Like the the guards are like, we can't stop. You got to help us. And so he just throws, I guess, through all the glass, these uh, uh, mothballs or whatever. <laughs> like they're they're like desiccant balls that just soak up all the water before the electricity goes off, so they don't get electrocuted. Um, and then uh, this was a weird. There was a weird part in this where I'm like, why is there a horse in this? But joker gets a horse and then lights it on fire and, I, and it's like I, he sh he shot a horse earlier too i think he just he, i guess he really doesn't care and like i don't know it's, it's he... almost like scott snyder hates greg capullo because drawing horses is not fun from what i hear and he made him draw two and then made him draw much many more in the, the next scene where all the uh inmates that are not i guess our main villains you know, just the regular crazy people in Arkham that Batman has put there, assumedly. He has released them and made them, you know, in full battle gear, like riot gear from the cops and with like flaming swords. And they all attack Batman, including like people on horses and stuff. And, you know, they call themselves like the knights, like they're the knights of the round table or something. So the only thing I could think why they put a horse here is because he wanted Batman to ride a horse in this at some point which he does and i was kind of like okay i i guess does it does batman punch the horse too it looks like that last panel like that he, he does punched he the punches horse the horse down him. and then the next panel he's on top of the horse so the horse has been broken to his will i'm assuming because <laughs> that's how you do it. yeah that's how you break a horse you punch <laughs> him in the face uh and then like when when everybody's down he like looks over batman does and he sees this tapestry that the joker's made of skin question mark of human skin i don't I think it uh, i think it's bodies tied together i don't think it's just skin. oh okay i thought it was just skin but yes you're right i'm seeing it now as we're staring at it i'm seeing this is the the backs of people that are dead bodies all lashed together and sewn together into a crazy tapestry that he painted i guess on their skin uh, on their back skins so that is uh weird we'll say yeah, uh, of of like Batman again, Batman and Joker's like it's all the big relationship parts. Yeah, yeah. There's like the laughing fish, then there's like Batman tied up, then there's like uh, uh, Jason Todd being beat to death, all that stuff. So, um, 
so yeah then i don't know it's just batman is extra mad now because of that and so he's like i'm gonna get you joker and he rides up the stairs on the horse the horse has to go upstairs and it's a spiral staircase i'm like i don't know if horses would like that but uh immediately mr freeze like comes around a corner shoots the horse kills the horse with his ice gun breaks the horse apart like he punches the horse's head after it's frozen and all little chunks of horses or or, or, frozen horse chunks fall on the stairs i'm like that's not nice that was a mean thing no they really feel like horses yeah apparently he's like fuck horses because that's the last horse too by the way (laughs) um so you know batman defeats mr freeze then batman uh, all of a sudden gordon comes out and he holds a gun up to batman like he's crazy but then it turns out it's clayface then he runs into the scarecrow um he defeats every one of them no problem and then he gets to the top room and we see uh, a bunch of guards that are dressed like the justice league members like wonder woman green lantern superman aquaman and then we see joker as a jester we see two-face as a judge uh riddler as the riddler and then uh the penguin as the pope or something he's supposed to be like a bishop basically a bishop there you go oh is is riddler a rook or something what is he i think he's like the i guess you would call he calls him the strategist so basically like the king's court okay there you go and they're sitting or they're standing next to a chair like a throne uh with no one in it we're assuming that's for batman and then there's also a chainsaw that is hooked to a 12 volt battery that's embedded in a rock so it's supposed to be like the sword of the sword in the stone. Yeah. Um, but a chainsaw. <laughs> did I say what did I, what did I say? No, no, yeah, you said like a sword in the stone. I said but yeah, but uh, Oh yeah, but a chainsaw. With the chainsaw. So. Yeah. Um so Joker makes the guards that are dressed like the other Justice League members try to grab the saw out of it and they get electrocuted and he's like, "Oh, I guess they weren't worthy." So playing on that joke. Um Yeah, I wasn't really sure what the fuck was going on in this part. I was just kind of like, okay, I'm going with it. But it's just some elaborate thing that Joker put together so that eventually when it's all like it's like a distraction because then we see uh, Joker has kidnapped all of the family, all of the the, the bat kids. Um, And he he shows video of it. So Batman believes it. So um, he makes Batman sit in the electric chair, which is what the throne is. And he electrocutes Batman and Batman doesn't die. I'm not sure how that works. Did you know? No, I, I, yeah, I didn't like, I, my only other thought was that maybe he wasn't like doing it at full power. I don't know. It was weird. I don't know either. I thought they were setting up for something else to happen. Like Batman to not be that person because uh they like the immediately after he gets electrocuted they like they throw the cape over him or a blanket or something and so it's just batman sitting in a chair but there's you know it's you can't see his face or anything so i thought they were gonna they were doing like a misdirect of like uh you know oh it wasn't batman the whole time it was he did get electrocuted but there's somehow he escaped you know because he's a genius or whatever and whatnot so i don't know um and yeah the panel with him being electrocuted was pretty crazy too because it looks like he's like foams at the mouth and like has blood coming out of his nose so yeah but i mean he passes out from that so um yeah he passes out from that joker also like shows like he he, he, the other people the other like two-face and penguin and stuff they start to like rebel like they they want more power than he's wanting to give them and um I, I'm he like pulls out a platter and is like, Oh, look at this. And then they're like, Oh my God. I don't know what, what they were showing, what he was showing them. I, I think basically like, cause at first he's, he's telling them like, you know, I, that they, they're going to stay there while he goes somewhere with Batman. And I think that they were more of like mad that like they weren't going to be in on like, well, yeah. But then he like shows them the platter, what's under the lid of the platter. And they're like, Oh my God. And I'm like, what is it? <laughs> They don't show it. Yeah, that's I I don't know. That's true. They're both like, oh my god, what is it? And but yeah, he doesn't. It, it doesn't show it exactly. Yeah, so and then he says it's like um, something about the bat baby. So I guess you're supposed to assume it's their faces or something. I, I guess yeah. From the from the next where it kind of starts off from the next part. I guess you're so. supposed to assume that, 
But then we find out, no. Because, like you said, we start off in the next scene with Batman waking up at a dinner table with the rest of the Bat family. They have sacks over their faces. Joker's like, surprise. Um, And then he makes it seem like he has cut the face off of all the kids, uh, much like he did to himself or whoever did it to him. And then Alfred comes out, and Alfred looks all crazy. He's he's all jokered out. He's got, like, white skin and a smile and stuff, and he seems to be playing with this. Uh, and then they take the sacks off of the kids' heads, and they have, uh, like, bandages on their faces. So the kids also think that their faces have been removed. And then they open the little troughs in front of them, and their faces are there with the masks on. So I'm like, okay, so we remove their faces. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, we should mention that Joker, like, all this table when I was in the, I guess, the catacombs leading to the Batcave, too? Yeah. So, like, this is, I guess, where he knew, like, from the story that Bruce told earlier, like, oh, this is where, like, the Bat boat went, and I knew that, so I took you here. Um, and so, yeah, he tells them like, oh, and they're covered in lighter fluid or whatever, or gasoline. So, uh, he's threatening Bruce with that. Uh, he also says like, oh, there's Flint under your chair leg. So if you try to back up, it'll spark and light everything on fire. So Batman does that lights his kids on fire, but then he's like, ha ha, you don't know these tunnels as well as I do. Let me throw a bat bomb in the ceiling and then flood the place with water. So he does that. And luckily there's only enough water to put the fire out and not kill everybody. But then he takes the bandages off of uh, Damien's face. And Damien's like, oh my God, what does it look like? My face is numb. Does it look horrible? And it's not, it just looks like his normal face. So Joker didn't cut their faces off. So whose faces were those, John? I I guess maybe guard yeah because they had them on ice and they were bloodies it, seemingly so may, maybe guards maybe i don't i don't know i have no idea yeah i don't yeah, know this either. is where this right here is where the story really took a weird turn and like i don't feel like it recovers this is where <laughs> well so like i feel like it never really had its feet that's that's the problem like it, it gave me feeling like the joker was really crazy and like really doing some things but then yeah like it's like, oh, he didn't cut him off? Well, okay, well, then why didn't he? And then, like, as we go on from here. Right. Well, I'll tell you why he didn't, because this is a regular DC comic, and we can't freak out people too much. But uh, there, were, I didn't mention it earlier, but there was some, like, weird occurrence where there was, like, a two-headed lion cub that was born at the zoo. That was some, like, omen they were mentioning earlier at the very beginning of the comic. And Joker had this cat... And apparently did surgery where he put a bomb that's like a Joker uh, laughing gas bomb in the cat's head. And then it exploded when Batman went after him. But the kids were in the the tunnel. So all of them are now poisoned with the laughing gas as Batman and Joker are fighting in the tunnels. So we can kill a bunch of animals in truly gory and horrifying ways. But uh, you can't hurt hurt the the bat family no but the, so okay so the bat family they're like laughing and trying to kill each other but then they're also like no no family like they're just saying the words these words like they're forcing it i i guess they're fighting it i guess i'm not exactly sure but either way they're fighting each other but it seems like they're struggling and they're trying to fight the gas influence um Batman eventually gets Joker to like a a waterfall that's high up and it looks like he might try to kill him. And once we get like the whole like killing joke speech where he's like, you know, if I just let you go, you're just going to murder people. And like, I'm tired of letting you do that. And you think, Oh, maybe he's going to actually like drop Joker, but uh, Joker um, shocks him in the mouth and then Batman drops him. And then Joker's face comes off. Well, he and he also kind of freaks him out, or he's trying to. He's like, I like, I know who you are, Joker. Like, I know your real name. Yeah, but and that so also is like, to, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I think that's supposed to be like getting back at the Joker. Like, like I also know everything about you, or something. I don't know. That's yeah, the way it's I know his like. real name. It's Jack Napier, like in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
but uh but yeah I, I guess he's trying to like yeah like he said do some kind of reverse psychology and joker's like nah and then he like shocks batman in the mouth and then uh Batman goes back to where they were fighting and he finds the little book that had all the information that Joker said on everybody and he opens it and it's blank. He didn't have any information. Um, and then we cut to the kids and they're still laughing and stuff, but Alfred, I guess the power of Alfred and family was able to calm them all down enough. So they didn't kill each other and they didn't die. Exactly. See the power family. That's why we read this for, for, for the holidays which i was like really there's no antidote no one has an antidote or something that they could show fine <laughs> and then also alfred's eyes are not missing and <laughs> he's perfectly fine he doesn't have any hammer blows to his skull or anything so i'm like all right uh, yeah and that's that's where it got me and i was like well wait a minute like alfred like he you know he looked creepy earlier so i thought maybe like he had work done from the joker but then it's like oh now he he's fine he just was like under like a crazed they just put white makeup or on whatever him. yeah so like so wait a minute so like joker really wasn't he didn't do anything what the fuck did he do john i guess he <laughs> killed some cops which he has done so that's not really different or new. and some animals and that's about it it's some yeah i guess like the horrific way the animals died maybe but still like what is he how is he that much crazier like what is i don't understand i don't know either and so so we get this big reveal at the end of how Batman knows that the Joker does not know who he is. And he tells Bruce is telling Alfred this. Cause Alfred's like, how do you know, sir? And he's like, I'll tell you why. Cause after that whole section where the Joker left his card in my back cave, after we fought the third time or whatever, um, I went to Arkham as Bruce Wayne went to the Joker's cell held up the card and said, I found this. I think it belongs to you face out and everything. And Joker just looked at him and looked past, looked at the card and didn't even look at Bruce. Couldn't even acknowledge that Bruce was there because if he acknowledges that, then it would break his mind or something is the idea. And then, and then it also leaves it in a weird spot because now Bruce is like, okay, family, we had this, you know, I didn't tell them, but now I'm ready to be like a, we're going to be a strong family. I invited them all over for dinner. And each one of them texts him or calls him and says, I can't make it. And like, that's where they leave it. And then the weirdest one is Nightwing, who's like literally sitting outside of the gate. And he's like, yeah, I can't make it either. <laughs> but he like was there. Yeah, he's literally out front and he's like, eh, never mind. I changed my mind. Yeah, it's like, I don't get why is why are they not wanting to be a family? And then uh the only thing that was left over from the laughing gas with his family was there was some radioactive element that was unknown that they were trying to figure out was left over. It's something new, and he didn't think it was dangerous, but obviously it probably leads to something else in the run later on. Uh but uh, Bruce finally identifies what element it is. And, uh, I don't know if this is a real element. I'm assuming it is called Dubnium, but then the other name for Dubnium is Hanium, like ha. And the, ha, the symbol's ha. name is ha. ha and ha, ha. yeah. And that's, that's it. It, yeah. It ends with Batman basically doing like a, 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 a was a, a face palm? Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, like this is so cheesy, which is what I thought too. I was like, "What?" <laughs> I face palmed at the end of this. I was like, "What? What did I just read?" And why does everybody say this is a good story? <laughs> oh, I can honestly say I was very. This was not one of my favorite stories. It took me a while to read because I had to read like one issue, and it felt like it took like forty minutes to read that one issue, and then I would put it down do something and come back when I was like not bored. And then, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, okay. Well we finished it. So John, what would you give it? And what do you think? So that being said, I, I mean, we're, I think we're in agreement there. We'll see where we end up here momentarily, but I have to say, I think it's apropos that we have our five year anniversary and we redo hush. And guess what? Hush is better than we remembered it being it is and it's better than this <laughs> and that's the thing now we have another batman story is this our new average 
and I feel I I don't know about average. I you know the art is fine. It's serviceable. Uh, well, I would I say like I would it. say it's better than serviceable. I mean, it's '90s. It's Greg Capullo. You know, cool '90s oh, art. Okay, yeah, it is good art, and like especially like with the action sequences and uh, like the explosions and like having extra light. Like when Batman gets like the stuff on his mask, the cow was cool. Um, all the villains did look good later. Um, Mr. Freeze and, and Clayface and whatnot. Yes. So art is good. Um, but the story is just, it feels like it goes somewhere and then it just fizzles. And then you're like, Oh, like none of the story really mattered. And it was pretty. In, uh, what's the, uh, in, in, in significant? insignificant. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, Oh, like, and we still don't like, and we still don't know what the whole purpose of like him peeling his face off was, other than to fuck with Batman. Maybe that he might peel off their hit the family's faces, which he could do it. He he could but, have calendar or uh, but he didn't Callan, do it. And, um, he had Dollar Maker do it for him, but then yeah, he can do it for anybody. So it's like, well, wait, what what was the point? <laughs> what is the point of all this? So yeah, I was very like, I was very let down by the story, and yeah, like it uh, like. There was again, like it had me in the beginning, and I was like, "Oh, cool!" But then realizing, like, "Oh, I mean, he did the things he normally does. He killed some cops, which is, you know, it's kind of fifty-fifty, depending on if you read like a more adult Batman or, uh, you know, like sometimes they just have some big smiles on their faces and like they're knocked out or something, <laughs> right? They're not necessarily dead, but still, it's like, okay, he hurt some cops, he killed some animals, and like fucked with Batman for." you know, eight hours or, you know, a couple days, whatever. So it's like, I, I don't know. It was like lackluster. So that being said, like, uh, I am going to give this a 4.5. This was definitely my least favorite Batman story that I've read so far. Really? Yep. Look at that. Yeah. I'm going to give this a four. I really didn't like it at all like there wasn't anything i liked about it at all um i like, can't think of a moment that i was like yeah um and after reading hush again and being like wow this was really fun even though like some of it doesn't make sense fully or there might be little errors or, or you know issues i have with it i had a blast reading it it was 12 issues and i read that in like an hour this is or it was 10 issues and i read that in an hour this is five issues and it took me like three hours to read <laughs> i was like i don't want to read this book anymore but we have to for this podcast <laughs> so. no we do this for y'all you chose it we read it and i, I don't know i'm uh, you know i don't think you guys need a you enjoyed our recap and hopefully that's good enough i don't know if you guys <laughs> need to pick this one you can try it it might be your thing you know like i said this is a very popular run so maybe me and john are just wrong but like or yeah. we have different tastes maybe. but if, if you guys have read it or you do decide to read it, like read it and, you know, or and let us know, like what if you like it, what about it? Like really was like that point, what puts you over on it? Because to me, yeah. And like so this is a, and we have I feel like we have a really good thing here because like Bat Matt is a Batman aficionado for the most part and like has this wealth of Batman knowledge of stories he's read. And I have read. Like, I won't go that far, but I, I do like Batman. I've read a bunch of it. You've read a bunch and where have I only read like a couple of the big stories, right? Like I, I enough, like, and I know enough of the, you know, I, the animated series and like all the movies and stuff. So like, I love Batman enough that, you know, he's up there for me. And I know I like a lot of the stories that, you know, for something that supposedly like, or is, you know, a very well liked right now is like, I don't, I don't understand the appeal of this one. Like it didn't really do much for me. Yeah. I, I feel the same. I think we're on the same page on this one, which I'm glad <laughs> if you liked this, I was going to be like, how is this possible? <laughs> uh, but yeah. And you see, there you go. Because you, Matt, Matt always says, I like everything. And I, I'll give him the, I'll give him the credit that I do like end up liking a lot more and giving a lot of things like a little more leeway, but I don't know. Yeah. This one just didn't, it didn't hit me. Like you said, and that's why I don't even give it a five. Like I don't, I don't think it's a base, like a, a middle. Like it's like I think it's a little less than, a little less than, like an okay. Like I don't think I would read this one again, unless we did another five years. Like, is this is I this our worst I one? Do this in te year ten, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I, I definitely think it's worse than base level medium, you know? Like, I don't know why people say this is, like, a great run. Um, I mean, like I said, I read the first 12 issues and was like, I mean, I guess. I think that was better than this, but I... I mean, th I would say that's probably like the five, like the Court of Owls stuff. But I mean, it's got absolutes. It's got omnibuses, the whole run. Like, I mean, people love it. So I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> but, you know, that's just us. That doesn't mean it's like actually a bad story for you or whatever. You know, you might like it. Um, so, you know, if it sounded cool, check it out. Uh but, uh, I mean, obviously our patrons thought it sounded cool. If, yeah, if you read it, like, let us know why you love it. Like, maybe, you know, we can have a, a back and forth in the comments and and get to, like, w you know, why it's appealing to you. And, and yeah, I'll tell you why you're wrong. Missed. That's what I'll... <laughs> I'll see. I'll see if there's something I missed, and Matt will just tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, our patrons were the ones who voted for this, so obviously it sounded cool, like, on paper. Uh, and speaking of our patrons, uh, thank you very much, Hoku Otaku Mike. Christian, Matthew, Kyla, Joseph, Kalia, Isaiah, and Kevin. You guys are awesome. Uh, we appreciate you guys voting, and we hope you enjoyed our little breakdown of it, our, our thoughts on Batman Volume 3, Death of the Family. Um, even though we weren't big fans of it, doesn't mean that it won't be your thing. Um, but uh, we, we did notice last month uh, we had, for the Patreon exclusive we had picked we thought you know one specifically one the one we did uh which i don't remember what it was what was the one we we did for the win i can't remember now but i know now and i don't the one we did for the you know voted one we thought the now one I'm that voted to, what did we do last month i don't remember the one that we voted for or that you guys voted for uh that one won we were like oh it's an obvious win you know but then it turned out we at the very last second someone voted and there was a tie so we did the one that we thought won, and then I saw it was a tie, which it was tied with The Goon. So we are going to do The Goon this month for the Patreon exclusive. The Goon is a Dark Horse comic that I love. It's kind of like funny horror, um, and uh, I enjoy it. It's got a quirky sense of humor. Um, and it came out in the 2000s, which I was reading it issue by issue during that time. John has never read it, so that should be fun. Um, and then... I will say for uh, for our um, Christmas stuff coming up, we're going to do shorter episodes, single issue episodes, because it's Christmas. We're all really busy around the holidays. So we picked a bunch of different Christmas episodes or issues to do for the regular stuff and the exclusives, and then also a bunch of one shots that you can choose from if you would like to vote on Patreon at patreon.com slash playing strains and comic books, all one word. If you sign up there, you get the exclusive episode and you get to vote on the second episode we do every month, which was what this Batman death of the family was. So, and next month, you know, there'll be smaller, but we're, we're going to do the, the main pod, podcast, the podcast that the patron votes on, and we'll put up the poll a little bit earlier that way. Uh, you know, since the holidays, everybody gets some time to get to it. And uh, then also, we always around the holidays we we do a special uh, Christmas episode for everyone as well. So we we actually have a little additional special. Uh, yeah, we for do everyone. one extra Christmas special that is for everyone. There's an exclusive Christmas special, and then there's the everyone gets a Christmas special. Everyone gets special, special and then patrons get an extra exclusive special. <laughs> yes. So we we've picked those ones out. We'll let you guys know that next month. Um, but uh, but yeah, so uh, we're going to be reading the Goon for this month's exclusive. Uh, I think it's Goon Volume 1. We'll figure out exactly because they don't put them out in the same trades anymore that they had before. So uh, we'll let you guys know. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's what we're doing. So if that interests you, definitely go sign up at patreon.com slash playing strains and comic books, all one word. And we will see you guys on the next one. On the next one. Bye.